Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the Horasis uh, Asia event. Uh, so uh, there, there are two of us. We are waiting for the rest of the crew, and they should join uh, any moment. Uh, but we'll uh, get started. We'll get started on uh, on the on on the topic. Uh, 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 so why don't we start with uh, uh, introductions? So Tadahiro, do, uh, do, uh, I'll, I'll give my introduction. I'm a, I'm a tech uh, entrepreneur based out of uh, uh, the Silicon Valley here in San Francisco. Uh, I, uh, I have a I, I have a background in uh, starting early stage technology companies. Uh, I've started uh, uh, three companies. My last uh, startup that exited uh, was a company called Quick Labs, uh, which we sold to Google uh, in uh, 2016. The next startup that I'm doing is called Infinity Chains, which is in the supply chain space, where we make uh, you know supply chains more kind of transparent, uh, ESG friendly, and sustainable. Uh, and uh, very 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 excited to be here at Horasis. Uh, Tarahiro, you want to go next? Just give a quick uh, introduction. Okay, um, my um, I'm Tarahiro Kawara. I mean, I'm based in Tokyo, Japan. And my company is actually um, primarily uh, infrastructure. Um, we make uh, we make bridges and uh, big steel structures for high rises and such. And our group also have a software company, um, um, other uh, product making companies, uh, aircraft operators, and uh, uh, I have a robotics uh, uh, next generation. Um, next generation service robot uh, company called Kawada Robotics that makes humanoid robots. So I think that's why I'm, I, I'm uh, asked to be on this uh, session. Uh, I'm very excited to be here and I hope uh, others will join. Awesome. So, so, the, so the topic is, uh, you know, it's focused around uh, fifth uh, industrial revolution. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go through it a lot. And, uh, the moderator uh, had some very interesting points, which he sent across around, uh, what should be the focus of this discussion. Uh, but largely the discussion is around a, uh, what is the fifth industrial revolution? How is it different, uh, than anything that has happened before, specifically the fourth industrial revolution? B, uh, how is it going to impact Asia and the developing world, right? Like how is uh, Asia and the developing world going to react to the fifth industrial revolution and see, uh, you know, this, this global crisis that we all are facing, how has uh, that impacted either the acceleration of the fifth industrial revolution or has it slowed it down, right? So that's kind of the general context to set the stage. Uh, so I'll, 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 I'll kickstart, right, uh, Tara, here, uh, what, yeah, what do you think in your view, uh, is different about uh, the fifth industrial revolution, uh, as compared to anything we have seen in the last, like, you know, uh, last few years when it comes to really advanced technologies, uh, like AI and robotics that have become really mainstream. What's really different here? Well, I mean, Look at us, uh, we're meeting like this for one. Uh, um, I mean, this is a technology we had before COVID, but uh, obviously COVID uh, uh, really accelerated uh, um, this type of meeting, how, how we do, how we meet pe with people. Uh, we can, I, I'm, I'm, Tokyo has, is the COVID number has really gone down. So almost everyone's out and about now, but uh uh, we are all afraid of the uh, uh, sixth wave of COVID, so people people are being careful. But uh, uh, I think it's a really accelerated. Um, um, uh, we I think many things we already had before, like I said, like we using Zoom, WebEx, uh, uh, this run the world, um, accelerating, and and also the technology. Uh, such as uh, 5G and uh, quantum uh, computing and such, the, the more computing power, uh, how fast we can do, uh, using data, uh, AI, uh, deep learning, will really change the uh, the way we, we 
we do things. Uh, but at the same time, I think uh, it used to go just efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. Uh, but uh, I think there, uh, I, I read some about the uh, fifth gener- uh, fifth industrial revolution. It's 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 more inclusiveness, uh, humanity, and such. Uh, I think will be very important. Uh, you know, we cannot just ask. Okay, AI says so, so we do it. I mean, it. it it's humans. We 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 use AI. AI will tell us. Oh, with the situation that we're happening right now, we recommend to do it like this. Like like yeah. experts will tell us, but we don't have to do it that way. We can say, well, I don't like it that way, and we can t- decide it on our own, right? Yeah. Uh, but Jitesh, what do you what do you uh, what do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, know the the uh, great great points, right, Tara? You know, I th- I you know uh, very similar. I fully agree with you. Uh, I feel the big difference. Uh, the way I see is in the fifth industrial revolution, which in my humble opinion is already uh, happening, uh, is that uh, technology, but specifically software, becoming very mainstream, right? Uh, both on the consumer side, but on also on the enterprise side. And on the consumer side, I'll give an example, right? If you think about something like Alexa, you know, my five-year-old daughter interacts with Alexa mm-hmm. and uh, she uh, she has gotten very used to thinking about it as a way to almost access the internet without fully realizing, right, what's mm-hmm. happening, Right. Uh, and and uh, the way it is different than any other piece of technology we have seen before is a, a few things. One is the interface, how you are interacting with this piece of software. Like software is different than any other technology for a wide variety of reasons. Uh, but here, uh, the key difference is the interface, right? How you are interacting with it. It's very human friendly, uh, you know. Uh, and uh, uh, and and as very early on, you know, you start asking those questions that, you know, uh, why is it not answering this on the consumer side? But on the enterprise side also in the fifth industrial revolution, as you rightly said, is technologies that are human friendly. You don't see these technologies uh, as technologies that are taking away your jobs or they are completely foreign to you, you know, uh, Example, you know, uh, bots that are assistants uh, in uh, in uh, accounting software, you know, finance software. It's happening all over uh, all over the map, right? It's 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 very widespread. But I think those technologies that are very very human friendly in the way you interact with them, right? The way you interface with them, right? You don't feel that this is something super foreign to you. This is this is a very geeky tech thing. Only a select few know how to work with this, right? Uh, so I think that is, uh, to me, uh, at the heart of the fifth industrial revolution, right? Mainstreaming software, right? You know, Mark Anderson had this quote that software is eating the world. And I think we are really kind of living through this phenomenal time where it's really eating the world, right? Where it's happening to everyone. If it's happening to my five-year-old daughter, that, you know, she is interacting with something where very little is happening in that device. Most is happening on the cloud. And then she will ask, start asking this question. So, you know, why is this, uh, this answer changed from the last time, right? Uh, that is different from a tape recorder. That is different from any other technology you could think of back in the day, right? Different than even mm-hmm. three, four years old back, right? The software is not in the device. It's in the cloud but it's becoming very human-like mainstream. So I think that's mm-hmm. the big, you're seeing the tip of the iceberg and we are going to see more and more of that, right? As as uh, networks become uh, more kind of broader, they are more capable of uh, carrying this data, you know, uh, we, we, we'll see, uh, you know, software being available everywhere, uh, a lot of smart devices. Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, I mean, I mean, your your daughter that um, g- grows up with uh, talking to Alexa, uh, you know, that's quite different from uh, um, um, my. When I was a little boy, there was no personal computer, so a completely different. But I remember uh, when I 
my son, who's 26 now, uh, in Japan, we had the uh, uh, first uh, Sony Aibo robot dog came out. And uh, we went to a robot show, and uh, he was, my son, I think, was about five years old. So he wanted, to, I knew he wanted a puppy. So I, uh, you know, I talked with him. He said, do you want a robot dog or the real, uh, real animal dog? He said, doesn't matter. So, you know, that's, uh, that because, because seeing the uh, robot like that, he thinks that there's no difference, you know, the child. And uh, like my daughter grew up with, back then it was an iMac that came out and around the turn of the century, and my, my, my daughter was using the mouse. I was very surprised when he, she was only about three or four operating the uh, computer. But, I mean, at your, at your daughter's level now, it's it's more ubiquitous and, I mean, everywhere is, is, is computer. So... I think the people's mindset is different, but I think the one big, big thing that um, is happening is uh, it's still humans that that's very, very important. You see, um, uh, I, I said it earlier that you know we cannot just let the AI make decisions; we make decisions, correct? And yeah. uh, I just went to a very interesting event—not uh, event, but it's a, it's a it's a real thing. It's a uh, uh, Avatar Robot Cafe. It's okay. a, it's a, it's a business. This one business is uh, uh, the robot. You talk to the robot, who which is operated by by operators. They're called pilots. That they mm-hmm. they are staying home, and most of them have have some uh, uh, disabilities, so they cannot go outside. So they cannot work usually. Um, but they do actually physical work using the robot, but it's actually humans that are doing. Uh, we talked to them. Um, you know, this, this lady that took my order was from uh, Hiroshima, and she that, that means 500 kilos away. Okay. But uh, yet, uh, with the 5G communication, we are. she's serving me food and coffee, you see? So, um, I see. AI is interesting and 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 it's 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 a tool, but it's, so, it's so in, more in, human in, interaction. In, uh, so, so sorry to interrupt, uh, Tarairo, but no. that's super interesting. So in that case, is it uh, 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 so uh, the server is sitting far out, and yes. the robot uh, is uh, really doing all the serving uh, with, but she's controlling it from almost hundred right. kilometers out. Exactly. Okay. That's so cool. So it's a, it's a staying home and the working from home, but yeah. you are actually physically working. You know, you're not just doing the data uh, analysis and programming and things like that. You, yeah. I mean, I think, and uh, and it was super fluid. You know, I talked with her. There's no delay. Uh, you know, the robot will greet me, and and there's a person behind it. So I think. But those people, uh, uh, operators, have uh, used to be uh, like a coffee barista or a cook. Uh, they used to be in the service industry, but they developed a, a situation that they cannot go outside. But through this uh, technology, you can work. You can work yeah. and generate income. And I, I thought that was so special because I know some of the uh, – uh, service robots, including mine, actually, are uh, uh, just not teleoperated, but fully just uh, uh, moving on its own, autonomous. But uh, having the person behind it uh, gives it uh, a really uh, warm touch. Um, yeah. and, I, I, and I think that that is a type of thing that it will happen in, even in, in, in factories, you know, you just automate all the factories and you get rid of all the workers. But I remember when I first did my robot, uh, the robot, uh, we, we, we entered the, uh, this is about 10 years ago now, my uh, 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 collaborative robot. But ours is really cool looking because it's a humanoid robot. But Toyota uh, won, the, uh, won the award. It's a great award by uh, government. 
And it doesn't look like a robot. It just like it's an arm and it's a shabby. So I thought, oh, it's a, just because it's a big guy, he they they won the award. But what he said uh, really ringed me. Okay, this is a robot that will ease a person's uh, uh, operation. He, you know, he'll his back will be he, uh, the risk of get, getting him injured is less, and uh, uh, he can he can carry heavier things with ease. A quality will be better, and and also because the humans are involved, robots don't give me the new any kaizen ideas. Yeah, humans, yeah, you know, and using this robot. Oh, because this robot can do this. Uh, if we add this uh, device to it, we can do more. You know, so I, I just this is over ten years ago. I heard this. But uh, uh, I, I, I always have this, even in this, in this, this, this world, uh, people talking about autonomous driving, autonomous uh, everything. I think yeah. the human touch is very, very important, even now. Okay, th- thank you, Tarayu. So I just want to uh, also make uh, one quick announcement, right? So we have two attendees. So uh, uh, we, we are open to making this very interactive. So, uh, Wanshi and uh, uh, Yoshitika, uh, if you want to click on the mic icon, you know, uh, and ask us questions, uh, please uh, go for it. Uh, you know, we uh, uh, I'm speaking on your behalf, at, uh, at Tadai, but I think, <laughs> yeah, we'll be open to it. Uh, yeah, so, so, so the next uh, uh, thing, you know, uh, is around... Uh, what uh, has happened uh, with uh, uh, what is really going to accelerate uh, this uh, fifth industrial revolution, right? What are the key underlying kind of dynamics and parameters across geography? If we had to take that very kind of high level view uh, that uh, that will accelerate something like this, right? Uh, uh, so I have some views on that. Uh, uh, so uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll go first, right? So one of the things I do strongly believe is that what's happening today, as we are moving from the fourth industrial revolution to the fifth industrial revolution, is uh, we are making computer science and the education of computer science very mainstream, right? So we are almost making computer science as another science, right? Uh, at high school, how you learn biology here in the U.S. Uh, and you learn like any other science. Or uh, We are saying that, you know, you have to have this basic knowledge of computer science, right? Uh, giving uh, my example of my daughter who is talking to Alexa. If uh, a five-year-old kid will ask you questions, right, why the thing changed a bit, you have to at least uh, give some basic uh, knowledge to the kid, uh, which is, it could be very abstract. You don't want the kid to be a programmer, but abstract level that, oh, this is how computation works. This is how cloud works. And I think that democratizing that is really going to accelerate the fifth industrial revolution. And I'll, I'll give you an example, both on the consumer side and the enterprise side, right? On the enterprise side, uh, the big example is uh, the revolution that's happening with the uh, robotic process automation. It's a very, very big deal, right? You know, uh, banks across Asia, across Europe and across no- uh, North America, uh, which were always a little behind when it came to technology, uh, got on board with technology with this thing called RPA, which is robotic process automation. And the idea at a very 40,000 feet level is that, you know, if you are someone who is really non-tech, but you are, uh, uh, you're someone doing your job on an everyday basis, which is super kind of manual, but there are repetitive tasks. Then there is a piece of technology. There's a product that you can use that will automate that task for you, right? And uh, what that has done is that for a lot of people who are in this traditional industry of banking, they have to know at least a little bit about how programming and technology works on the enterprise side. And that's a very big deal socially and from an education standpoint, right? And from a consumer standpoint, if you think about it, are these consumer technologies around education, right? You know, we, uh, you know, you really young parents, Alexa is one example, but you give your kids like iPads, iPhones, you time them, you say that, you know, 
for 30 minutes you have this and uh, uh, broader on consumer uh, it's gone really mainstream right uh, you, you're using uber and other technologies and you tend to think like how does this kind of uh, if i'm uh, 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 if i give a bad review then uh, i won't get that driver back again how does that work uh, and uh, the education around that, right? Understanding basic things around uh, recommendation algorithms, uh, uh, education platforms, even something like YouTube getting democratized and being available for everyone, uh, I think is a key thing in the adoption of uh, what we think of as 5IR. Mm -hmm. Right? So over to you, uh, Tarahiro. What do you think will expedite what is kind of the catalyst uh, for 5IR on the both the enterprise side and the consumer side? Well, it's, uh, um, well, you, what you said is uh, uh, very valid and, 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 and very, very right. I, uh, I really appreciate it because because I tell you, when I, when I, my first the programming was Fortran. And <laughs> I, have to, I have to write this uh, uh, thing up and I got to give it to the puncher and uh, IBM card and, and did that. And so it was a very, very specialized uh, uh, trade, really. But now um, sometimes you can just talk to it, you know, right? like Alexa or a Siri. My, my wife is always cooking something and, and she's like, uh, um, a Siri, give me, uh, give me a ring in five, five minutes, you know, that, yeah. that, that sort of thing. And so... Uh, so the learning time is significantly shorter now. Um, so you can, again, uh, this is my, my human thing is more important is we can, we can do more creative things rather than uh, you have to learn about the banking, what you said, banking or uh, accounting or what have you. Uh, or, or, um, you know, my, my wife and my son took uh, architecture class from Harvard sitting at home uh, uh, in Tokyo last year because, because of, uh, they had a lot of time. And, they, you know, uh, so that was a Zoom technology. So a lot of things. Uh, and uh, I used to, when I was in college, I had to go to the library to, to find things. No, you, I, you know, I just go here and, 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 and okay. ask Google about it. So um, it, things get more easier. Um, there are more creative things uh, uh, we, we should be doing. This. So um, um, vocational, um, you know, whatever we do is so different. Uh, but but I, I kind of worry about it because uh, my, my wife's car, you know, when it gets dark, it turns the light on itself. And, and uh, uh, when it rains, it, it you know, wiper by itself. And so... <laughs> What, what if uh, we had to drive a manual car? Will they be able to operate it? You know, um, um, but uh, you know, it, it's good and bad. But uh, um, I mean, th this is the way it's going to go. It's going to go, and uh, uh, younger people that you know, your daughter will, will will live in a completely different world from you know, grew up in from what what, what I grew up in, and. But, it, you know, the world is so small now. I mean, whether in Cal you're in California, I'm Tokyo, uh, what have you. I mean, it, you get the same information, right? Um, so yeah. um, if we do it right, uh, I think that it's, it's great for the humanity. It's great for uh, – I tell you, that you know, that cafe I was uh, uh, at yesterday, there was a lady from Melbourne serving some customer as well. So, wow. you know. That's in Australia, but you know, time zone difference is not that different. So she can work. Uh, even even some, I think when she started, when when the Melbourne was locked down because of COVID, but you know, you can do that now. So um, uh, I don't know where I'm going, but but um, this fifth industrial revolution is definitely happening, and uh, we have to cope with it. We have to we have to control it. Um, but if, if we, I, I personally think we shouldn't be too dependent on it. I mean, we, uh, otherwise, uh, uh, matrix type uh, situation might might really happen. Okay. What do you think, Vish? So, so yeah, yeah. I think I think you know. Uh, 
So, so we have someone who got the mic. Uh, Hong Chun, do you, do you have the mic? Go for it. Oh, great. Can you, are you able to uh, speak? How do we allow people to speak? I, I saw uh, a prompt and I accepted it. Okay. So, so we also have a question uh, from, but, but let me, let me, uh, that, that's an interesting thought, right? So one of the things that I feel is, you know, it's this interesting balance uh, that is happening. What I think as very, op uh, as an optimist, I think uh, it's an interesting balance where, uh, you know, technology becoming more uh, mainstream. And I keep going back to software. I think of it's very uh, important to differentiate between technology and software. The software becoming more and more uh, mainstream, available, and disruptive uh, across the world, right? You know, uh, I grew up in uh, India, born, born and brought up uh, uh, in India, moved here 20 years back to the U.S. And... Uh, and if you think about even uh, really sometimes smaller villages in India, they are uh, using uh, a really kind of advanced uh, technologies from a software standpoint, even farmers, right? And that becoming more and more kind of uh, mainstream. And the, and the meaning of mainstream for me is like friendly, right? A regular human being can use it. I think that's a very, very big deal, right? And, and that's a big deal. Uh, to a point where, uh, you know, you, you feel that, uh, uh, your interactions and your data is not getting abused. And that will open a complete other can of worms around privacy and what will happen. We'll not get there in this discussion, but, you know, uh, as long as the underlying platforms and the states where these platforms operate in, you know, they can give some guarantees to the citizens or humans across geographies that, you know, uh, there's no abuse happening of the data. I think uh, uh, that is to me the crux of the fifth industrial revolution, right? That humanizing technology. Mm -hmm. So we have a mm -hmm. question from uh, uh, Vanshi. What are some of the leading technologies we might see in the fifth industrial revolution in Asia that could improve customer experience? You're also seeing more developments in smart cities and higher call for Sustainability, that's a great question. How would these technologies support uh, these agendas? Uh, yeah, do you want to uh, you want to go for it? Um, well, I mean, definitely uh, AI, big data, uh, 5G technologies, and uh, uh, more and more computing power, uh, like uh, uh, quantum computing. Uh, I know in Japan, Toyota is experimenting with. Uh, uh, they they uh, they flattened their one of their biggest the factories and they're building a new city called Woven City, and uh, they're going to experiment with the uh, whole sorts of um, technologies. So I'm I'm looking forward to learning from that because they're going to have actually people move there and use the uh, all the all the new stuff. So. <clears throat> But to me, um, it's a mix of big data AI and uh, uh, computing power, software. Uh, those are all important. But uh, in recent, recent, uh, uh, recently, uh, there are a lot of reports in Japan about uh, elderly drivers um, mistaking <laughs> brakes and the accelerator. And uh, uh, eighty some year old person who's just uh, wanted to go to grocery store ended up killing someone, and uh, I think that's a, a really scary thing because in the rural areas there's no uh, subways and buses. The, uh, people, I think, in America is, is, is such a such a problem must exist. So I think uh, if the AI can monitor your behavior or uh, uh, you know your 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 actual. I mean, this the privacy issues would be a uh, difficult thing to uh, cover. But if you do some irregular things, maybe AI can say, you know, you're doing uh, something that's you, you you don't usually do. And uh, uh, <clears throat> um, so maybe maybe the person will be aware of that. Maybe I'm getting too old for certain things. But with the aid of a computing. Um, and uh, uh, 
big data and all that, uh, you can continue to have a, a, a good life, a good uh, work. Does that make sense? To you? sense yeah, to you? yeah, yeah. That, that's a, a great point, right? Uh, uh, so, so a very good question, right, uh, Wanchi? So, so the way I think is that you know, uh, it is uh, uh, digital infrastructure is more elastic. But physical infrastructure is less elastic, especially in democracies. You know, growing up in India, I'll give you an example. Like it's it's hard to really scale a highway because suddenly the population increased in this city like Bangalore because that ended up becoming the hub of the back end for the world when it came to IT. But mm-hmm. it is relatively easier to scale a digital infrastructure, right? Uh, so what is happening I think at least in South uh, East Asia and like India, Bangladesh is that, you know, entertainment, uh, retail, uh, education and, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, e-hospitals, they are largely, they have become digital and they got accelerated. The adoption got accelerated due to COVID, right? And A, the adoption got accelerated, but B, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the behavior got changed, right? To Tadahiro's point, right? The behavior got changed that once you're used to this, you're used to watching something on Netflix and not going to a physical movie theater. Uh, you just kind of, you know, it, it leads to a changed behavior, right? So, so a combination of these technologies, I think are playing a big role. In Asia, right? A combination of these technologies, cloud, but I wouldn't even call it technology productizing it. How do you productize that? How do you, how do you really package this in a way that appeals to the mass, right? On the sustainability side, right? I think what happens again, going back to the physical and the digital world, the physical world, especially in Asia, it's very hard to A, set goals around ESG and sustainability that you can communicate to a broad set of people, to a broad set of stakeholders, and B, to measure those goals then back, right? Or are all these stakeholders really kind of following this that we have set? An example is a fashion industry. You know, Chloe uh, last, uh, a few months back said, we are going to be a B Corp. What that means in EU or the US is that we are going to be very uh, climate friendly. But that doesn't mean anything if you're making all of those bags and shoes and clothes in India or Bangladesh. Are they really uh, being paid right? Are they not abusing the water they use? In a physical world, it's very hard. But the moment, you know, you put in technology, you put in like digital, it becomes relatively easier. So my answer would be, Vanshi, that's, you know, overall digital, like cloud Mobile computing, I think, is the answer, and that's helping that agenda. So I think the next uh, big uh, point and the topic is, you know, uh, overall, uh, what as humans we have been facing with COVID, has that helped with uh, 5IR or has that been a negative, right? Uh, You know, uh, I'll give my view, Tada Hero, if it's okay. You know, uh, I'll give my quick uh, kind of opinion on that, right? In my humble opinion, I think that has really helped. You know, uh, you know, we had this really bad uh, event, uh, which is overall has been really negative. And we speak about the negative, the tragedy around it, which has been really, really bad. And, you know, uh, it's it's really heartbreaking to see what has happened due to this, but it's continuing to happen. But there are a few uh, uh, kind of, positive side effects of it and one is the adoption of digital right the the kind of it ended up being like a forcing function to adopt uh, digital technologies across a set of things right education uh, you know retail uh, you know entertainment uh, and that i think uh, is in turn uh, putting a lot of kind of positive pressure on uh, providers uh, uh, businesses who are uh, digital on how they can be, uh, how how they can better serve this channel, right? So I think, in my view, COVID is a net positive. And you know, you can look at public companies that are listed. You can look at how they are doing. 
who are uh, digital, right? Alphabet, Amazon in Asia, they've all done well. I think that's, uh, that's, that's a positive, right? And governments are recognizing this. I can see in India, in India, you know, uh, we read a lot of negative news about India, but the reality, there's a lot of positive what's happening in India. And, uh, on the, especially on the government side, uh, the government is taking a lot of what I think of as, uh, you know, uh, foundational technology and foundational kind of building blocks. Uh, uh, to enable this core technology and, uh, you know, uh, building blocks, right? Around finance, what they're doing. And that is, that got like, uh, doubled down 10x to COVID, right? Over to you, Tata here. Well, um, I mean, I feel, I feel bad to the people that are suffering. I mean, I have people, I have friends that lost their loved ones, uh, that didn't need to be, uh, need to die uh, because of COVID. Um, so there are many, many negative things that happen, but just like Jitesh said, um, overall, I think is positive. Uh, for instance, my, my company, I mean, the meetings means you, you physically take airplanes and uh, trains and subways to come to a certain place and you, you physically meet and talk and and, and and doing that, we're emitting all sorts of CO2 and uh, a carbon uh, to to do that. But um, because of COVID, uh, um, I mean, I hardly I hardly go anywhere. I mean, I miss it, but uh, um, I know I'm not emitting as much CO2. Um, and uh, even right now, although the uh, it's coming back a little bit, and it's. Yesterday, I went to a trade show, and I was actually surprised how, how many people were there. But if you meet in person, uh, some, you know, chemistry happens and the new, new thing, uh, it'll, it'll lead to new things. So, so physic, um, so there are some good things and bad things, but I think overall, um, it really was a good thing for, uh, uh, humanity overall. Because I, I think this year the, and the nature in Japan is is more beautiful. I think it's because uh, uh, we didn't pollute as much uh, this past year. Um, although climate change has not changed, it has not been slowed down much. But uh, I think it's better for the nature. I see more birds. I see more beautiful flowers. Um, yeah, I'm closer to my my family. I see my wife every day and. Eat more health, eat, eat healthy food she cooks, and so I think it's. Uh, I think it was good. That's great, yeah. So, so we have uh, about five more minutes. So, why don't we open it up for any comments, questions? We have a few uh, kind of uh, folks in the audience. Anyone wants to grab a mic, ask any question? Uh, Please. Both of us have a diverse background in education, sustainability, tech across yeah. Japan and uh, the US and India. Any questions uh, you guys have, we are happy to answer. The audience might know better than us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Jitesh, I think, uh, thank you very much for leading this. Uh, oh, there's somebody. Yeah, there's a, there's a question here, okay. Oh, great. Huh. Can you read his question? Uh, I think Neeraj was asking a question. I'm giving Neeraj the mic. I don't know how to control these. Uh... So I guess we are running out of time. Uh... Yeah. So Neeraj, if you can uh, hear us and you have the mic or uh, you can uh, post your question in the comments, right? You can post your question in the, in the text comments. We are happy to answer. Or, you know, you, you have our kind of, uh, uh, you can, uh, you have our contacts. 
in the in the chat right uh, uh, you know leave your question there we are happy to get back Yeah, on the on the on the sustainability side, right? Just to just to uh, leave a quick note, uh, you know, uh, uh, within uh, the fashion industry where we operate, uh, my uh, company operates, Infinity Chains. Uh, I think we are seeing a big change. We are seeing a big change in two areas. One is where uh, a, a consumer base that is uh, a lot more conscious because of technology. I think it's happening because of technology. Uh, and the second thing, uh, what we are seeing is on the supply chain side, technology is enabling uh, uh, a massive supplier base in Asia that was not digitally native uh, to uh, onboard uh, on on technology, become digitally native, and be more transparent. Right? We uh, we always used to have a opaque supply chain because uh, you know it was hard to really. Uh, uh, get uh, a big chunk of that supply chain on board into a very kind of uh, forward looking digital platform. And I think that's a big change. We are seeing that and that's a net positive. That's a, that's a, uh, that's a really positive thing, uh, uh, for sustainability, for ESG, uh, getting, uh, you know, uh, getting that visibility into where your stuff is made and, you know, uh, uh, is everything right there, right within that supply chain. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, for attending this. Uh, it was not uh, 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 ideal as planned. I don't know, uh, Tadahiro, if you have any closing uh, thoughts here. Well, I appreciate uh, everyone enjoying our, our little uh, group. Um, and Nitesh, uh, I really thank you for leading this uh, uh, session. And I'd like to uh, communicate with you, and uh, maybe when the COVID ends, uh, maybe we can physically meet. And where, where in California yeah. are you? Uh, I'm in the uh, in the Bay Area. I'm right oh, on the there. peninsula, uh, around the Palo Alto area. Oh, nice! Very yeah. nice. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where where right. in Japan are you, Tarahiro? I'm in Tokyo. Okay. I'm awesome. in Tokyo. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, when you maybe your um, cherry blossoms time or something, if you want to come to Japan, uh, we'll be very happy to host you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Same here. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Our time's up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone.